Welcome everybody for being here. Thanks for being here. I hope you're as blessed and encouraged by whatever I have to say tonight as I am about by being able to fellowship and hang out and talk with you guys and be around you and receive encouragement from you. So what I entitled this after, as Pastor said, we were talking about this this afternoon, is Dominion Over the Storm. And the theme of it is I am learning how to be content no matter what circumstances are. So we've been talking about freeing ourselves from negativity, negative thoughts, accusation, and these sort of things that we just finished 21 days of fasting from negativity. And this ties in with a passage that was referenced in yesterday's sermon, which is in Philippians 4, and I'm going to use 4, 8, 9, 11, 12, and 13. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am in therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So while Paul wrote that he has learned what sliver state he's in to be content, I am learning how to be content no matter what my circumstances are. And this is important because if my level of peace or your level of peace comes from our circumstances and having ideal circumstances then our ability to have peace is unstable as our circumstances are. So if something good happens, yeah, we're feeling good. Things are going smoothly, all right. Then, say, a terrible fire happens. Well, now we're feeling rotten. You know, now maybe times have progressed and things have improved and things are going smooth again. Now we're feeling good. You know, something else happens. You know, a loved one dies. Now we're feeling rotten. Whatever it is, we're a victim of our circumstances. And then, and it's what we do. We seek to control our circumstances because we don't have dominion over the storm. What we have is an attempt to control our circumstances and to avoid being in storms. But that's just not life. In this life, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome. So, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to face the storm. And it's just like I talked last time in the, the brief talk about building your house on the rock instead of the shifting sand. And what Jesus said about that was that if you hear my words and do them, you'll be like the one who built his house on the rock. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting in verse 9 here in Philippians, it says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, Do, and the God of peace shall be with you. It's exactly the same message, a slightly different illustration. But he's saying, if you hear what I'm saying and you do it, then you'll be at peace. If you hear what I'm saying and you do it, your house will be built on the the rock. And what did he say? He said that the storms will come, but the house will remain standing. And so this is dominion over the storm. The pastor reminded me about Jesus slept in the boat. And so... He had peace and was able to rest even though there was a storm. And so, dominion over the storm is to be at peace even in the circumstances. And it's to be able to say, even though bad things might happen and circumstances might not be ideal and I'll face tribulation. I know that 
everything that I am and everything that I have is in the hands of the Father. And so no matter what happens, I can be at peace with that. And that's, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> but that's why it's, I, have, I am learning. Um, but that's what Paul's instructing is, is think on these things. So how do you do that? How do you get there? Well, it's think on these things. Jesus had a bunch of principles, you know, like love your enemies and give without asking anything in return. And those, those were the things they hear and do. And Paul's saying, focus on these things. Focus on the things that are true and pure and honest and lovely and of good report. And that's what brings you into that state of being at peace, to fix your mind on those things. So we go to Mark chapter 4, and I'll use verses 35, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And this is Jesus in the boat with his disciples. And Jesus said to his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, and it became flooded with water. And Jesus was in the hind part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him and said to him, Master, don't you care that we're going to die? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And so they were awestruck by the fact that he had dominion over the storm. Because the thing is, while he was sleeping in the boat, he understood whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And I know there's plenty of teaching that says, well, he knew they were going to make it to the other side. He was assured of that. But I want to take this into an illustration that we can use where we don't know if we're going to make it to the other side necessarily. But to be at peace with that and to be able to say, I'm not going to let this storm have dominion over me. It's not going to dictate whether I'm in joy or not. It's not going to dictate whether I'm in peace or not. I'm not going to let the storm have dominion over me. I'm going to have dominion over the storm. And I think if you think of it metaphorically, it's not necessarily really that the storm stops. But the storm is, is these things banging and clashing against you. And it stops clashing when you come to, when you come to be at peace. That exercises dominion over the, over the storm. And so then now, even though to everyone else it looks like turmoil, to you, the winds of calm and the waves have stopped. And so a storm is calamity, turmoil, opposition, circumstances that smash and destroy. And it's interesting that the disciples said, don't you care that we're going to die because it's so typical of us to equate worrying with caring. And so they see this as like apathy, you know. So he's, he's thinking, you know, it's bad enough I got to be on the boat with you guys. I don't even really like you, but, you know, I mean, what do I care what happens to you? They're, that's what they're, they're accusing him like he doesn't care because he's not as frantic and panicked and worried as they are. And he's saying, he's teaching them, it's not that I don't care. Of course I care. It's that I'm at peace, and I'm not going to let the storm have dominion over me. Because I have learned whatever state I am in to be content. And so he was able to rest. He was able to rest in the Lord, knowing that his hands were in the, his life and his soul was in the hands of the Father. And if you think about how worrying what Jesus had said about it in Matthew 6, 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? So that's worrying. And I, I love the, the fact that it says add one cubit to his stature. Because first of all, there's an equation of, of stature, height, meaning your social status. Like you can't be elevated in your social status by being one who worries. But it also is something that when you go taller, we call that growth. You can't grow yourself by worrying. So I love that illustration. You can't grow yourself by worrying, and you can't be seen as more important than by worrying. And in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, 
Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And what I like about that is that he cares for you. And that's a distinction from about you. He does care about you, but he cares for you, meaning on your behalf, which is why it says cast all your cares on him. And what do we do? We, we, we cling to it and won't let it go. We don't cast it on him and say, it's yours. You deal with it. <laughs> and that's what it's saying. Cast all your cares on him. Because he'll do it for you. He does the caring for you. And so thank you. I wasn't even planning on doing that. <laughs> but there it is. Right. And I let, I let him care for me. And that was great. <laughs> so when you do that, that's, you build your house on the rock by hearing these things and doing them so that when the storm comes, your house stands. And just as Jesus said, he who hears these things and does them will be like one who builds his house on the rock and the house will withstand the storm. Paul said, if you hear these things and do them, the God of peace shall be with you. And what were these things that you hear, hear and do? Is finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Thank you. Yeah. Do we want to look for any comments or questions that we might have? I'm, I'm sure something came across your heart and your mind. Which one of us have, have, have never gone through worry? Huh. Or even last week, concerned about things and maybe a little bit overly concerned. So uh, this opens it up. We all face storms in one form or fashion. You know, I'm going to be like. I try not to, to worry and, and claim things and keep, you know, praying on it and speaking it as if it already is. But then there's always that part that comes up. Well, what if this don't happen? Or what if that don't happen? And sometimes, no, the more I try not to think on it, the more it stays. You know, and even if I try to think on other things, because Christian had given me the Philippians part a year or so ago. And even if I try, I can't. It's like, it just, I can't focus on that because I become so consumed right. with the worry part and I can't shake it for a while. Well, that's, I think I've mentioned this before, either the last talk or, or, or previously, but if I haven't anyway. Um, it's what you practice when you're not in the turmoil. Just like, just like a football team runs drills. And so when it's game time, they're not sitting there going, all right, what, what was that formation? How do, where, where do I line up? What was the pattern I run? Because it's been drilled into them over and over again that they've practiced it when they weren't in the game situation. So it's practicing these things. And that's what's so important about like this 21 days of of mental fasting is to fix your mind on these things when you can do it so that when these things come up, you're not trying to practice something that you haven't practiced. That's, that's good. The other thing is too is um, these things have a tendency to come, in, to come up when you're at your best. Okay, I explained earlier today. Right. Where when my son came home from prison after 13 years. Hallelujah. You know, the joy and all that I had was almost stolen. 
by a phone call, mm-hmm. which was out of my control. Mm-hmm. Out of my control, it had nothing to do with me. But again, that practice, Alan Iverson, practice. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> but that practice of doing things the right way caught it with me. And it just, it, it, I'm learning how to transition from keeping the negative and the negative and taking that negative and turn it into a positive. It's like you said, practicing it over and over and over again. So, you know, uh, <clears throat> the growth part of it too is uh, it's great because it's your blast out. He lashed out at the next closest thing around him or whatever it may have been. But he's learned through practice how to deal with certain situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, not an expert at it, but I'm getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like a little pastor and like that tree planted by the riverside. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, it's always, always growth. You keep feeding that tree, the branches are going to grow, going to continue to grow, your leaves are going to fall off and they're going to come back. But in the midst of all that, those leaves fall off and come back, you don't you experience, you don't experience something. Which is growth. Which is growth, man. It's just, it's just great. So it just, it just, it just, you know, everything that you said, man, it was great. It was great, man. And, uh, you know, we all go through that storm. But it's a lot of times it just seems like that storm comes at the wrong time. I don't know the right time. I don't know what, what is it. It's the right what time. is the right time? The storm. <laughs> but it just seems to come when you're at your happiest sometimes, man. When you're, you know, right. if I allow that to right. steal my joy, man, I'm learning. You're right. I'm learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when one of those uh, Arachlodons come, <laughs> you remember you preached about the uh, Arachlodon? Yeah, that's that's a beast, man. That's a, that's a awesome. That's a you talking about uh, you're talking about uh, experiencing like to me that that Arachnidon, that that horrible storm, hurricane, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, uh, that destroys mm-hmm. a lot of things. Mm-hmm. That you might cherish your your house, your vehicle, you know, loved one passing, and all that. It's pretty hard not to get in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Pretty hard not to um, allow the spirit of God to 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 guide you through it. But uh, like you, you guys are saying, you know, practicing what is preached is what we're supposed to do. That's the will of God for us to to, to learn His will and apply it to our lives and know that everything's going to be all right because <laughs> He got it, you know. Um, but the Rockladons are tough, man. It, it, it ain't nothing easy about it. I mean, we could talk about. I mean, I wouldn't want. <clears throat> I was just thinking about Job and how uh, how that example. I don't know if anybody else could could have did it, but Job. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if anybody else could have did it, but Job, you could have did it. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm. I, I don't think so. But I think what's interesting about that is that his supposed friends were just accusing him of he must have done something to yeah, to earn yeah, his status. Yeah. Yeah. To, it must have somehow been his fault. And would you stop denying that it's your fault that you're in this state? And his that's why it's so important that when those kinds of things come, that you've got a family like this. Because that's what's going to get you through it. And in Job, God didn't show up until Elihu showed up. So here's the thing. God's going to show up in the people around you. Very good. Very good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Because at times, I'll give it to God, but I want to hold on to a part of it. Yeah. Like he can't fix it all better than me. It's like, okay, I don't want to give him 
everything. I'm going to keep this because I know I can deal with this. And then I end up having to call somebody RG <laughs> or somebody, like you said, to um, family. And I know that what comes back for I call Chuck something um, and get that support and get that, you know, back to reality. Mm -hmm. Let them have it all, you know. I want to try to keep something. You got to cast it away, yeah. It's the difference between, um, like the Bible says, brethren, brothers, and sisters mm -hmm. in Christ, than friends. It's a huge difference. Yeah. And, and you know that because uh, the Bible says iron sharpened of iron. I mean, the brethren, the brethren will lift you up and encourage you right. versus what Job's friends did, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't encourage him at all. Oh, is, even his wife mm -hmm. cursed God and died. That's a rough one. Right. I mean, he was in distress. He said, I wish I'd never been born. I mean, that's distress. You, you don't get much more dis you don't get much more distressed than than yeah. to even think there's so little hope I wish I'd never been born. Yeah. You guys ever feel like you're all being stroked? <sighs> stroked. You got, a, you got a pet, like you stroke your dog, when you stroke your dog, exactly. how you stroke your dog. That's the feeling that I get sometimes when I'm stuck in something and I reach out and get that up like on a Like a comforting, you mean? Comforting. It's comforting, it's comforting, but I'm just calling it, I'm just calling it stroke. Like I'm getting mm -hmm. pet, it's pet me, like, you know, that massage okay. that you get when you're in something. You know, we all seen Scarface before, who did this? Me, that's who. Who put this thing together? Me, that's who. But you got to step aside sometimes, man, and realize, you know, it took a while, but you ain't put Jack together. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and then you get that that stroking feeling from one of the brothers that's just like massaging your mind, your brain, your spirit, actually, and it's just pulling you out of whatever that you're, whatever you're in, and just slowly but surely pulling you out of it. Pulling you out of it. There was times where I'm not going to no man to get no help. <laughs> I'm not going to rely on him to help me do this or do that. I'm, I'm too proud. Mm -hmm. Too proud. Big time. You know, so you know that just that massage and that stroke. You know that an animal. You do. You got a dog. You got a dog. You know, whatever. Anybody had a pet. You got pets. And when you when you pet them dogs or stroke them dogs, they just like them out. <laughs> What like, more? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. What more? I want to hear more. What's <laughs> more, man? So yeah, that's when I get out of all this. Because I was that dude that was hard-headed, man, that didn't care about being massaged or stroke. And you know, it took it took a while. It took a while to get you know to get to know the man upstairs, and I still don't know him. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, for you guys, the encouragement that I get for you guys to help, that I get for you guys is awesome, man. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I kick myself in the back. And it hurts, too. <laughs> and why didn't I do this a lot earlier? But, you know, God has his own way to work with all of us. Amen. Thank you. How you doing, Brother Rob? I'm doing good. What's on your spirit, man? Um, first of all, let the church say amen. 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 Um, it's all about faith. You know, Jesus had peace on both sides. <clears throat> he knew where his faith was. You know, and sometimes when we go up against things and things come up against us, we don't really activate our faith. Like you said, we try to do some things we think we can do. But forget the scriptures, say, God said, give it all to me. You know, just get out the way. Just allow your faith to build. You know, and when you, like a tree planted by the brookside, like a mustard seed, the more you get stronger in your faith, the bigger that tree gets. You know, we just got to keep stepping out on faith, just to believe that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. If we allow him to. Mm -hmm. You know, and beautiful messages. You know, because we all come up against things. Yeah. We all get doubtful. 
We all want, you know, but if we keep reading the Word of God, there ain't the things that He gave us. He gave that to ourselves. You know, He said in His Word, um, I have not given you the spirit of fear. But do we activate that in our lives? Right. He gave us dominion on all things creepy on earth. Do we still jump when we see a spider or a roach? It's because of our faith. What is our faith built on? Solid rock. 